numbers can be divided into two categories real numbers real numbers are the numbers that can be represented on the number line now if you remember what is a number line number line is a line that extends from minus infinity to plus infinity and has zero in the middle this line is called as number line so any number that can be represented on this number line is known as real number and imaginary numbers the numbers that cannot be represented on the real number line are known as imaginary numbers now if you have to look at it in a point of view square root of a negative number is not possible so if i say find out the square root of 4 you will say the answer is plus minus 2 but what is the square root of minus 4 it is not plus minus 2 it can be written as 2 into square root of minus 1 this square root of minus 1 is a term which refers to iota and is an imaginary number so square roots of uh, square roots or cube roots or any root nth root of a negative number is not possible such a number is known as imaginary number so a number could be a real number or an imaginary number these are the two broad classification of numbers let's talk about real numbers now real numbers real numbers as i already stated can be represented on the number line extending from minus infinity to plus infinity so that means real number can be negative and can be positive so you can have negative real numbers you can have positive real number and the case of zero let's look at how real numbers can be classified the first classification will be rational numbers any number that can be expressed in the form p by q where the denominator which is q is not equal to zero is known as a rational number so any number that can be written in the form q by p by q so that means a number two a number three by two a number one by two a number which is hundred by seven or 7 by 100 anything that can be represented in the form of p by q where q is not equal to 0 because if q becomes equal to 0 the number will be a undefined number and irrational numbers irrational number a number which cannot be represented in the form of p by q that means a number which cannot be represented in the form of numerator over denominator is an irrational number that is the definition but if you go by understanding irrational numbers are the numbers which are non-terminating and non-repeating decimals so if a number is non-terminating that means it does not end and non-repeating that means there is no pattern which is formed once the number is written such kind of numbers it is very difficult or i would say it is impossible for a non-terminating and non-repeating number to be written in the form of p by q such numbers would be known as irrational numbers a point to notice it is non-terminating and non-repeating it is not non-terminating or non-repeating both the conditions have to be satisfied uh, some examples of these kinds of numbers are pi pi is what 3.14 and it goes on and on and on and on it cannot be written in the form p by q now if you say pi is written as 22 by 7 that is just an approximation that is not the exact value of pi because if you keep on solving 3.14 and all that kind of stuff it goes on to give you a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal the other example could be square root of 3 or square root of 5 or square root of 2 the value goes on and it gives you a form which is non-terminating and non-repeating so real numbers can be classified into rational or irrational any number that can be represented in the form p by q or numerator or denominator is known as a rational number a number which cannot be represented in the form of p by q examples are pi square root of 2 square root of 3 or any root of a natural number where the exact root is not possible is an example of a irrational numbers irrational numbers are non-repeating and non-terminating let's look at the case of rational numbers closely now i already stated rational number is a number that can be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are integers 
This rational number can be again classified into integers and fraction. Integers. Integer means that if I make the denominator q equals to 1, I'll only have the case of numerator such as 2, 5, 100, minus 10, or it can be minus 73, whatever. I have my denominator equals to 1. That is known as integer. So an integer is a number whose fractional part is 0. I have only the integer part. There is no fractional part associated with the number. There is no decimal associated with the number. So if I do not have a fractional part, I would call it as an integer. If I have a fractional part, I will call it as a fractional. So where if my q is not equal to 1, obviously q cannot be equal to 0. And p is not a multiple of q. Now what does that mean? I p cannot be cancelled out with q to give me an integer. That is a fraction. So what is it? 2 by 7, 5 by 7, 7 by 11. So I have numerator over denominator form where denominator is not equal to 0 is an example of a fraction. Rational numbers, integers and fraction. Real numbers, rational and irrational. Let's look at fractions now. Fractions could be terminating and non-repeating. Terminating means it ends. And non-repeating means it terminates but it does not repeat. So for example, 1 by 4. What is it? 0.25. 1 by 8. 0.125. These are the decimals or these are the fractions that terminate. That means they have an end. They do not form non-terminating, non-repeating. Had they been the case of non-terminating and non-repeating, I would have called them as irrational numbers. So if you have fractional, they would definitely terminate. The second could be non-terminating but repeating. So I can have non-terminating but they are repeating. See, look, both the things need not be satisfied because if both the things are satisfied, it will turn into an irrational number. So here it is non-terminating, but it is repeating. Something like 1 by 3. It is 0.3333. 1 by 7. So if you go on solving these kind of questions, 40, sorry, 0 0.1428, 1428, 1428, and it goes on. So these are the examples of fractions that you can have. Let's look at integers in detail. Integers. They are real numbers having no decimal. So that means if I fix the number p by q form and I fix the denominator equal to 1, I get an integer. So the examples could be negative integers or positive integers and the case of 0. So integers can be classified as negative integers extending from minus infinity till the case of minus 1. It will have a case of positive integers or I would say as non-negative integers. Non-negative integers means negative, non-negative means 0 and positive. Now 0 is neither negative nor positive. So 0 will not come in the negative category. 0 will not come in the positive category. But when I'm saying non-negative that means non-negative. They should not be negative. They can be 0 or they can be positive. So non-negative will start from the case of 0 and extend till plus infinity. They'll go on till the case of plus infinity. So if I have to classify them, I would call them as 0 which is neutral and positive. Positive natural number, positive integers would start from 1 and go on till plus infinity. The other name for positive integer is natural number. So natural numbers, they start from 1 and they go on till infinity. The other name for ne non-negative integers is whole numbers. Whole numbers start from 0 and extend up to plus infinity. So whole number, natural numbers is a subset of whole numbers. Whole numbers start from 0, natural numbers start from 1. 0 is neither negative nor positive. So 0 would not be covered in negative integers, 0 would not be covered in positive integers, but 0 would be covered when we are talking about the case of non-negative integers. That means non-negative can be the case of 0 or positive. Let's move ahead and let's look at integers in another way. Integers can be classified as even or odd. Even any number that can be represented in the form of 2n where n is an integer 
is an even number an even number is a multiple of 2 it can be represented in the form of 2n or in another way the remainder of this number the remainder which an even number gives when a number is divided by 2 comes out to be 0 so if a number when divided by 2 gives a remainder of 0 it will be an even number odd number it can be expressed in the form of 2n plus 1 Or two n minus one. That means when divided with two, I get a remainder of plus one or minus one. That means the number is not a multiple of two. It is some odd number which gives me a remainder of plus or minus one when divided by two. So integers can be classified as even or odd. Minus three, minus one, all of them will be odd integers, and minus four. Minus two plus two plus four, all of them would be categorized as even integers. So let's look at some of the rules that we have. If you have two odd integers and you are adding them, you would get an even. So for example, five plus three adds up to give you even. Even if you are subtracting two odd integers, you get an even. Sorry, uh, if you are uh, subtracting, just like, like yeah. So when you are subtracting, you get an even integer as your answer. Or I would write it as something like two n one plus one, and the second one I write it as two n two plus one. So when I combine, I can write it as two n one plus n two plus two. So this remainder which is there gets added up to give you two, which can be combined with the Initial quotients that you have to give you a newer quotient, and there's no remainder that you have, so you get an even number. Even and even adds up to give you even. Odd and even. There's a remainder of one. There's a remainder of zero. So if you add up, remainder of one will still be there to give you a number which is odd. Odd into odd will give you again an odd number. Even into even would again give you an even number, and Even into anything, let it be an even or an odd, will still give you an even answer. Even into anything, let it be even or odd, will always give you an even answer. Only odd into odd will give you odd answer. Otherwise, odd into even or even into even will end up giving you an answer which turns out to be even. That means a multiple of. Let's look at the case of positive integers now, or natural numbers. Natural numbers can be classified as prime, composite, or unity. Now, when I'm talking about this, prime number is a number which is having two distinct factors. So, the number of factors for a prime number has to be two, exactly two. One first prime factor is one. and the second prime factor is the number itself that means a prime number is only divisible a prime number is only divisible by 1 and itself prime number is not divisible by this number it is only divisible by 1 and itself examples are 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 17 19 and so on all the numbers which are only divisible by two numbers one and the number itself are known as prime numbers numbers which have more than two factors so other than prime i can say a number which has more than two factors so that means the minimum number of factors for a composite number has to be 3 So minimum has to be three. Would be known as composite numbers. A number which is not a prime number generally is a composite number, with an exception of unity. One, it is neither prime nor composite because for prime you need to have two factors, and for composite you need to have greater than two factors. And the number which is one has only one factor, which is one. so it is neither prime nor composite natural numbers again if i talk about prime or composite with an exception of unity unity is not a composite number so the smallest prime number that you have is smallest prime number that you have is 2 and it is 
the only even prime number all the other prime numbers that you have are odd it is the only even prime number so if you talk about all the other prime numbers 3 5 7 11 13 13, they have to be odd because if they turn out to be even they'll be divisible by 1 2 and the number itself so it'll turn out to be a composite number we hope you have enjoyed this video please like our video and subscribe to our channel on youtube you can visit our website edusathi.com to practice more questions on this topic and access other useful information like us and follow us on facebook and twitter to get exam related information and other such updates we wish you all the best for your preparations thank you and have a good day